Alrighty, let's imagine that it is NG1 or IG1, NIBOS, General Certificate, Open Book Exam Day. That's a mouthful, bloody hell. And you've just opened up your exam paper. What should you do? Well, let me give you a step-by-step -step technique to passing on your first attempt. First thing you're going to do is open the exam paper. Here it is, or it's an example of one. Now, what I like to do, I just like to look at the questions first. So you can read all the preamble if you like. But I'm going to skip past the scenario and just go straight to the questions because I want to see what have you got in store for me? Are these easy questions? Are they hard questions? Are they topics that I understand? Let's just get to it. So here we've got, oh, we've got a health and safety work act question. Got a, got a culture question. Oh, I love that one. What are the negative indicators of culture? I love that question. It's so easy. Brilliant. That's 15 marks in the bag. Financial arguments. Great. That's pretty easy. 10 marks there. So that's 25 marks. Just need, just need another 20, 20 and I've passed. Accident investigation. Okay, right. That seems a bit harder. 10 health and safety issues that should be prioritized at the committee meeting. Okay, that, can't, that doesn't sound too bad. That's not too bad. We can always pick issues to prioritize. What type of training should they arrange? Okay, it doesn't seem too bad. Okay, right, so, oh, oh, oh my goodness, we've got a table here, it looks right. Okay, so I look at the questions to see, you know, what does it kind of feel like? Now that I've seen the questions, I'm gonna take a look at the scenario. So we read all the scenario fully, Start there. This scenario is about a page long, two pages long, nearly. Read that thoroughly. You may find it useful to print off the scenario and underline key parts of it that you can refer to later when answering your questions. What do I do next? Well, next thing I'm going to do is go back to the questions. Back to the questions and read them again. Keep reading the questions. Read them very, very carefully. But this time, I am going to rank the questions in my head or on a piece of paper. I'm going to rank them from the easiest to the hardest. And I am going to answer the questions in a particular order. I'm going to start with the easiest ones and I'm going to finish with the hardest ones. So for me personally, I would probably start with this, what appear to be the negative indicators of a health and safety culture. That seems pretty easy to me. Then I'll probably attempt this financial arguments question. Again, seems pretty easy. Then I might have a crack at the Health and Safety at Work Act question here. So I'm going to start with those three. Chances are, if I answer those really well, I can pass or nearly pass the whole exam just on those three. I'm going to leave some of the others till last. And one of the hardest ones in here, it looked, it looked to me like this one here. Comment on the suitability of the target action table in helping to improve health and safety management system performance. I'm looking at that, I'm, I'm a little bit baffled by what they're asking for, how it works, and so I'm gonna leave that one to last. But by starting with the easiest ones, I'm gonna get such a confidence boost because I'll see my answers and I'll think, yeah, okay, I've got eight or nine marks there. And look at this one, I've got another 12 marks there. Look at that one, it's probably gonna be another seven or eight marks there. By the time I've done the easiest ones, I'll know I've, I've pretty much passed, which is gonna help me when I do the harder ones because I won't be so terrified. I won't be so paralyzed like a rabbit in the headlights. <laughs> Now it's time to start answering a question. And let's start with that cultural question, shall we? What we need to do is create an answer plan, or what I like to call a shopping list, of things you're going to talk about in your answer. Now this question here is a 15 mark question. So we need to be giving 15 negative indicators of health and safety culture in this organization. And it's asking us to refer to the scenario. So we're gonna go through the scenario and try and find 15 different indicators to put in our answer. So what I've prepared in advance for this question is a list of things to talk about. So here, I've literally just copied and pasted from the scenario the things which I think are relevant to this question on safety culture. And I've got more than 15 points there. So what I'm gonna do now, now that I've got my plan as to what I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna add some detail to this and talk about each of these in two to three sentences, two to three lines, very short paragraphs, just explaining the point and showing the examiner that I understand this. You don't understand? I do. I, I understood that reference. That I can do more than just copy and paste. So let me try with this one here. Staff turnover is very high because most of the first aiders who were trained have now left the organization. People are leaving the organization perhaps 
because they are dissatisfied with how they are treated, including on health and safety. So there we are, I've just, that one's done. That's a tick, that's a mark. Let's see if we can do another one. The directors do not believe that health and safety is a full-time job. They seriously underestimate the amount of work required to improve and maintain high levels of health and safety performance. There we go. And there's even a typo. It doesn't matter. It's not a spelling a test. That's another mark. It's a 15 mark question. I've already got to. I just need another 13 to go. They have told you there is no budget for health and safety. The focus of the directors is entirely on production and profit. They are not interested in keeping people safe. They are only concerned about money and operations. Money, 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 money. There we go, that's the third one. That's in the bag. So that's what we do. We read through the scenario, we find the 10, 15, 20 points, however many we need. We list those in a bullet point type structure and then you add further information with as many references to the scenario as you can find two to three lines for each point. If it's a 10 mark question, you should end up with 10 short paragraphs. Each paragraph is a point. Of course, you can do more. You can do 15 paragraphs, 20 paragraphs. You can write as many as you like. And that's probably a good thing, to be honest, because if one of your paragraphs is not mark worthy, maybe having an extra two or three at the end, which are mark worthy, gets you closer to that top mark for the question. Hey, just before I carry on, if you are enjoying this video, you will absolutely love our Nibosh and Ayosh video e-learnings. We've got videos like this all over our e-learning platform and they are designed to make Nibosh and Ayosh fun, interactive, and most importantly, to help you smash your assessments on the first attempt. Anyway, let's go back to Muggins here with some more tips. Now, while you're answering these questions, make sure you keep referring back to the scenario at every opportunity. It's really important that you show that you're not just copying and pasting information from the scenario or from your book and dumping it onto your answer sheet. For example, you definitely want to avoid doing anything like this. Let's just take the Compassa course materials and we just dump that into one of our questions there. So here we are. Let's say this was a question on something. You just dump that in there. Why would you do that? It's like none of that is relevant to the scenario. You should take that generic knowledge and apply it to the scenario. And in this case, you know, we could say things like the, the employees at the bakery, it's a bakery scenario, could be under the influence of drugs, alcohol, prescription medications, which can influence their decision making and cause symptoms such as drowsiness. And this may be a cause of the accident. So if the question was about what are the individual human factors which could cause an accident, you could look at the section on individual human factors and you could take that and using references from the scenario, put that into your exam paper. And all of a sudden we have quite a good mark there. Now, while you're answering the question, I do think it's good practice to go back to the question and check that you are still answering that question because it's just so easy just to completely go off track. Stay on target. You must stay on target when you are answering the questions. Don't go off on a jolly of your own. Going on an adventure. See, you could start by answering a question on the, say, the financial reasons to manage safety and then accidentally find yourself talking about the legal reasons to manage safely and then start to waffle on about the moral reasons to manage safely. And then instead of talking about reasons why you should manage safely, you start to talk about all of the things they should do differently. To be honest, all of that's great, but that's not what the question is asking for. I'm sorry, what was your question again? Anyway, once you've answered a full exam question and you've written out your two or three lines for every single point, then you just move on to the second easiest question 
and you do the same thing with that. So it's repeat the process. Once you've done that question, you then repeat the process for the next question and on and on and on all bloody day and then you sleep on it and you wake up early the next morning and you check it all and then you submit your paper on the next day. There we are. That's how you pass a NEBOSH General Certificate Open Book Exam. Best of luck.